Thank you very much for that. Um, well, I'm not quite sure what to say about that introduction. I don't think I've ever been presented as a queen before. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's very flattering. I did notice you had the Australian $50 note in the background, though, which is very encouraging because um, I'm a mixture of both British and Australian, so I'm proud of both of my heritages. So I was very well represented. I'd like to start by saying thank you. And I'm not going to be brave enough to pronounce the Turkish because I'm still learning, but I hope I got it sort of right. Did I? Okay, good. Thank you very much for inviting me to beautiful Izmir. It's really a pleasure because I haven't been to Turkey very much, and this is only my second visit. I went to Ankara last year to a similar conference at Wilkent University, but I was so excited when Richard and Kevin said, Please can you come to our conference this year? So thank you very much for inviting me. It's really a pleasure to be here. Thanks to both of you. Thanks to Gettys University. And also thank you to uh, the people who have sponsored me. CELT Academy. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that you brought me over here. Luckily you didn't have to bring me to Australia because I was in the UK already. That, I would have been doing the 40-hour journey, not the 36-hour journey. It's a long way to Australia. And I'm also very glad to hear that already a couple of things that I want to talk about this morning have been mentioned. Helen, very interestingly, put up some graphs to begin with. And I noticed that he was showing a smaller number of, um, a smaller number of teachers being involved and a smaller number of projects. And I thought, that looks very strange. But then you explained that the reason was that collaboration was becoming more important. So that's one of the issues that I want to touch on this morning because from the very beginning of my involvement with action research, I think collaboration has been a very important part of it this morning uh, for, for, for all those years. And then our colleague over here also mentioned the importance of communities of practice within organizations. And that's another area which I've become extremely interested in. And trying to search for models of teacher-practitioner research, which feed not just only into the individual teacher, which is extremely important as a professional development, but also into something a little bit broader that has a ripple effect to create a community of professionals who want to work together. So I'm going to focus on the idea of collaboration and why I think it's important. Um, and I start off. I start off by just sort of filling in a little bit about what action research is, why, what it's about, why it's important. And I love this quote from um, the uh, very important book by Reason and Bradbury on a collection of ideas about action research. This teacher says, for me, action research is really it's a quest for life. And I was thinking that that is such an important way to see it. It goes beyond just trying to do problem solving in our classroom, which personally I think is a rather reduced view of seeing action research problem solution. It's not really the way that I like to see the richness of action research. It's a quest for life, to understand life, and to create what I call living knowledge. Knowledge which is valid for people with whom I work and for myself. So here's somebody saying it goes way beyond the individual problem solving in the classroom to something which is much more deep and much more significant. And Reason and Bradbury themselves go on to say some further things. That what, we're, what this is about is creating new forms of understanding. Because action and reflection Sorry, re without reflection and understanding together, uh, action is blind, just as theory without action is meaningless. And I think that in our profession we've had an awful lot of theory, but that's not necessar necessary that that theory is translated in the into the daily work that we do in the classroom. So that is why I think action research exploratory practice are such powerful and important ideas for our profession. We need to bring our own theories of, of how we work, 
out through exploring our classrooms. So the part is a greater in nature. The collaboration is very important so that we share what we're doing as practitioners through our research with other people and look for ways to do that together. It makes it only possible for and uh, with, for and by persons and communities, ideally involving all stakeholders, both in the questioning and the sense making that informs the research and then the action which is its focus. So bringing these things together so that we can discuss them, share them, is I think an important aspect now in <coughs> practitioner research. So features of classroom research, this is not news to people in this room. I'm sure you've been thinking about this for a long time and you've been experiencing it. It's self-reflective, it's a systematic process that we put in place. Participatory for me is extremely important and I can see that it's becoming more and more important here too at Gettys. Uh, and a critical approach to inquiry, being honest with ourselves and open to what we can actually see before us when we do this research in the classroom. Uh, the participants, of course, are actors in the classroom, teachers, and I know this is something that Dick is very <coughs> keen on, that the learners are also involved. I probably haven't worked enough with bringing learners into action research, but I'm encouraging teachers I work with more and more now to try and uh, bring in their students as co-researchers in the whole process. Um, it aims to identify problematic situations and issues, and by problematic I don't mean the simple and rather reduced idea of problem solving. I mean looking at life and life in classrooms as things that are problematic. It's not straightforward teaching students in the classroom. There are always issues that come up, always things that make us curious or excited, and those are the plot problematics of what we do in our work, which are very exciting to investigate further. Bringing about critically informed understanding and also sometimes change, change may or may not happen. And I've had teachers I've worked with say to me, well, I haven't really changed anything, but I've learned a lot about what I do. And um, for me, this is a very important issue, that action research is underpinned by the idea of democracy. And one of the reasons that I'm so excited and keen on the idea of action research is that I think it opens up research to everybody. I'm not at all keen on the idea that research is only done by academics and universities. I think it can be done by everybody, and very importantly, by teachers interested in exploring their own classrooms. Of course, you're very familiar with this cycle, developing plans, acting to implement these plans, observing to see what happens, and then reflecting on what, what happens as a result. This is the sort of classic cycle which was developed many years ago by Chemist and McTaggart. Of course, we know that it's, that it's much more dynamic than that, and I think Buchanan put up a list of a whole a lot of areas which are involved in action or practitioner research in the classroom is more complex. However, I have found, working with many teachers myself, that this is helpful in looking at the sort of key moments, if you like, in the process. And it's, it's useful as a, an overall way of thinking about how we do go through this kind of process. Um, but I think I agree with Herman, who says, well, action research has implications of three kinds. <coughs> First of all, it can serve to improve these problematic situations. And certainly, um, some teachers I've worked with have had quite challenging or um, unsettling, disturbing situations in the classroom, which they've been able to look at through this process of investigation and work to improve that situation. But secondly, it has a very important aspect of helping us to understand much more what we're doing inside our classrooms. So understanding of a personal and also collaborative kind, I think, are extremely important. And then thirdly, we can, it serves to illuminate our social surroundings. So I'm hoping that the research that you're doing now is beginning to have broader ripple effects 
and to help people to understand the nature of the curriculum they're working in, the type of things that can be done to enhance that curriculum, not just within the individual classroom, but sort of more broadly across the whole um, community of practice that you're working in within your particular social and institutional context. So improving the environment and the conditions for our work as well are very important. I'd like to introduce you to PAM as a way of starting to think a little bit more about the collaborative aspects of action research. This is um, Pam. I've worked with her for many years. She's an Australian teacher uh, in a program I worked in, as was referred to earlier. Worked for many years in an immigrant program. And you may know that Australia is a land of immigrants. Her population was grown on people coming to the country to build, help build the, the country over the last 50 or 60 years. Many, of course, have come from Turkey also. And I think I've already met people here who have relations or friends, family living in, living in Australia. Um, so we were working in the immigrant program and Pam was teaching people who had just arrived in the country and who were still settling in and she was having a lot of difficulties with a particular group that she was working with. But what she said was this, at a time when I was searching for solutions, the invitation to join an action research project seemed to open a door and opening, opening the door was important to her because she needed to solve the challenges she was facing. I was not unfamiliar with action research, but the attraction of this particular project to me was its collaborative nature. What happened in this program was that we were bringing teachers together to ask them to, to look at the issues they were facing in teaching immigrants who were coming into the country. So she saw an opportunity to work with her peers and her colleagues as a way of getting new insights, new understanding of what she could do in this rather problematic situation she was facing. I saw it as an opportunity to explore my difficulties and to discuss strategies for dealing with these issues with peers who were experiencing similar concerns. Seem to be having a bad effect on this microphone. I'll try and keep it at a distance. Can everybody hear me quite clearly? Okay, that's good. So, collaboration was door opening for Pam, and I think there are various reasons why collaboration does open doors for teachers. And I'll just briefly talk about some of these. Well, for a start, classrooms are pretty isolating places, aren't they? We go into our classrooms, in general, we go into our classrooms, we close the door, and we're there on our own with our students. So it's an, isol it's an isolated situation, which is not a good thing for most teachers, because after all, we are usually keen to share ideas. So it's a bit like going into your island estate, you know, and with the picture at the beginning, I could be queen of that particular classroom. So it's like having our own little kingdoms or queendoms in there. And we don't necessarily have good opportunities to talk to other teachers. So we don't get to share ideas with each other. I, think, I know it's different here because you've been deliberately trying to do that. But I think in many, many teaching situations all over the world, teachers don't get opportunities to talk to each other. At least not in any way that is encouraged by the institution that you work in. It may be the photocopier or over a cup of coffee, but that's pretty informal. And good teaching really depends on being able to share ideas with each other. So we need to have, to, to keep building up much more than we have done in the past, what we might call a community of practice. People working collaboratively <coughs> together for the good of the better life that they want to involve people in. Um, and teachers have really great ideas for changing and improving practices in the school, not just in their own classrooms. So institutions really should be listening to teachers through these collaborative processes 
in order to know how best to, and most effectively to conduct the curricula that they have operating within their organizations. At least this is my quite passionate belief about why we need much more collaboration. We need to open the doors. So here are some different ways of collaborating. These are just a few ideas. It's by no means a final list. Um, I can notice people taking photographs of the slides. I can leave copies. You can, I can give you a copy and people can share it if you'd like to. So here are some ideas for collaboration. You can have um, collaborations with teachers working together. So you could have pairs of teachers um, or a small number of teachers. It doesn't have to just be two, but a small number of teachers getting together to work on an area that they've noticed really of mutual in interest. And these teachers can act as kind of critical friends to each other because you can share ideas across the classrooms. Another thing, of course, is to build up a research team. So you've got, um, you could have an existing team, everybody working on the same type of classroom, you know, the same CFR level, the same uh, certificate group, and people working as a team to um, build their ideas together and perhaps to work even on a selected topic or theme, which they think is very important at that particular time. And a third idea is to have a group of people working together. So individually or in pairs, you come together and you can work on your, um, your, your various topics, your area. It could be a similar issue that you're all very interested in, or it could be something that people just want to do more individually, but you want to have a sort of sounding board. You want a place where you can come to discuss your ideas and share them with each other. As I said, this is by no means exhaustive, but it's a few ideas for collaboration. So just a couple of minutes uh, together, I'd like you to look at these questions. I think most people in the room probably have conducted action research or know about action research. But have you been involved in any of those types of collaboration that I've just mentioned? And what do you think are some benefits for you of working with other teachers? So I'm going to give you like 30 seconds because I don't think we have too much time. Okay?